Welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer, and today we're going to be having a look at the production from my solar panels for the month of December uh, here in Southwest London. Now, I know this video is really delayed. Um, I just haven't had the time to shoot it, but I've shot the January one as well. So hopefully uh, I can put those out in quick succession and make up for it a little bit. But the gist of things is that December isn't a great month for producing solar power here in the UK. Uh, really short days combined with absolutely abysmal weather just gives you some awful production figures. And actually, on the 12th of December, I had the worst day yet. I guarantee you the system was working, but we produced literally no power. There was not enough sunlight at any point during the day uh, to kick the panels into action, which is just mind-blowing. Um, and we had a few days where we produced less than half a kilowatt hour and in fact on the last day of the year that sort of final hurrah uh, we produced 0.3 kilowatt hour so you know it just is what it is um, in the UK you just don't have amazing weather and as a result you don't produce a huge amount. Interestingly Solar Edge designer app um, actually predicted that we produce 130 kilowatt hours we did produce 126 kilowatt hours that was actually 35 percent of our consumption um, but that means that we needed to import uh, 225 kilowatt hours of 65% um, of that power. Now, we could drill more into those individual days and perhaps I'll have a few highlights flash up as I'm speaking, but actually there was some other interesting aspects about the month that are worth calling out. That is on the 8th of December, and indeed on the 16th of December, we produced over 12 kilowatt hours. So if the weather is good, we we're able to produce a good amount of power. But if the weather is bad, it's, it's just cataclysmic. But, you know, the 16th of December, we actually exported two kilowatt hours because the day before had been quite good. I think we produced um, enough to fill the battery up to a certain extent, I think it's over 50%. Um, and then on the 16th, we produced way more than we needed. The battery was already partially full and the outcome was exported, which I wasn't expecting. Don't get me wrong, the total amount exported for the month was about 4.6 kilowatt hours, barely worth 50 pence, but I'll take it. Um, the other thing I think is really interesting is the north-south split, because if you've watched any of my previous videos on this subject, um, I have two arrays, the one at the front, uh, compromising of 10 panels and a max output of four kilowatts, and that is a south-south-west facing um, roof, and then the one at the back of the house is north-north-east facing, uh, and that's the exact same four kilowatt hours with through 10 panels. And the rear, which in the winter really shouldn't be producing much, actually produced 25% of our total power, roughly 3.2, uh, 3.1 kilowatt hours per panel. Whereas at the front, we're producing just over 12 kilowatts, well, 12 and a half kilowatt hours per panel. So having those rear facing panels actually did make a bit of a difference. It produced an additional 25% of power for us. Yes, it's not exactly the amount it's going to be producing later on in the year, but it's nice that even in the bad weather, we could make use of them. And I think the reason for that is, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but I want to drill it home. In bad weather, when it's cloudy, the actual figures produced on the front and the rear are really, really similar. Because if the cloud cover is quite thick, the sun is diffused to such an extent that the sun's rays are being sent in all different directions by the clouds, and the result is that the rear and the front panels produce really similar amounts. So yes, that is on the days where you're reproducing very little power, but it's exactly on those days where you want as many panels as possible to at least get something um, out, of the, uh, out of the sun. So for me, it's still worth having even in December, but I'm hoping that from about March, we're gonna start to properly see some nice production as the sun starts to hit those panels properly in the mornings. Um, so far, we're just in early February. Um, it's not really making a huge difference. The sun isn't really hitting those panels properly yet. I am, however, really happy that we have the battery because of those 121 kilowatt hours that we consumed in this home, 77% came through the battery. So again, we're still producing more than we need during those hours when the sun is shining, but the fact that we can dump that into the battery and then pull it out at a later date is making a pretty big difference. So the 9.7 kilowatt hours that we have available certainly making a good amount more use of the power that we produce than we would otherwise. 
If you have an off-peak tariff, you could also be charging it in those off-peak hours overnight and then discharging during the day, potentially bringing your energy costs down further. Now, yes, that completely um, will depend on your energy tariff. It will remain. It will depend on energy tariffs remaining the same. All the usual caveats, but. You know what? I'm still very glad that we have ours, and at the moment where we don't have a uh, energy tariff that has an off-peak, um, it's certainly useful to have. So yeah, there you have it. December is what you'd expect. Pretty bad. Um, make sure you check in in a few days because we'll probably have the January video up where things were already starting to look up a little bit. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, do pop them in the comment section below. And as usual, I've linked to the full series of solar uh, videos that I've got on this channel so you can um, see the story from the start in case you're curious and haven't seen it yet. Thanks very much for watching and I do hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.